that if God is all sufficient, he's all sufficient in all things. Yeah. So he can drop whoever you need. They can find you in any place. And so it's really about perspective. If you believe that whatever is for you is going to find you or locate you, then that's what you believe. Either you have faith for it or you don't. People say that the dating pool is full of whatever. I don't care what it's full of. God, send me what I need to have. There it is. Yeah. I'm your host, Vale Chikuni. We begin. So, they decided to uh, to respond to some questions, okay? So, let's listen in to, uh, to how they responded. Habits and our hangups, as we navigate through this single moment and the single season, how would you say it's significant that we deal with our issues, the ones that are the iceberg, that may be the things we see, the things we do not see? How significant was a Christian-based recovery program to you? Because I'm leading a cultural community um, initiative with Celebrate Recovery, and I wanted to know, how did it help you? I know. Yeah, how did so, it help you? So, 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 the question, so the question you asked is how important it is. It's extremely important. It's a game changer. Uh, and what the program you're talking about that I went through was Celebrate Recovery. Uh, I felt like I had... Uh, when I was married, I felt like I had a sexual addiction, but it turned out I had a codependency issue where I needed affirmation and praise, which is directly related to my love language, which is words of affirmation. And so it's, that's why your love language can be, uh, I don't want to unpack that too much. But what it is is that I needed words of affirmation. So the women that I slept with were women that affirmed me when my wife wasn't affirming me. And so I said, oh, I just have a sexual addiction. I just, I need sex. But I went a year and a half with my wife and I, we didn't have sex at all. And I didn't masturbate and I didn't cheat or anything. So I had to unpack that and say, oh, you have a codependency issue yeah. you need praise from people yeah. because at that time right before that I was making tons of money and my, my money got real funny I was touring shows across the country and my value was attached to my bank account mm -hmm. and then when my bank account dwindled I said I didn't think I even deserved to be married mm -hmm. and so that's why it's important to get in faith-based uh, therapy thank you for your question hey there get Okay, I think it's good as Christians, whenever you need to get help, like definitely get help from uh, like a, a Christian counselor, it's very important. But to me, your priority should be first, get help from your pastor, okay? Get help from your local church. Now, if you need whatever professional help, at least let it be um, uh, a Christian based. Because the things they'll be telling you, the things they'll be teaching you, that Christian cancer, it'll be from a biblical worldview, a biblical uh, perspective. But I'm very troubled. All these people are Christians. All these people are believers. All these people are life coaches, relationship coaches. But I'm not biblical terminologists lacking. They are all single themselves and they seem not to have a problem with the creation dating. They're just all over the place to me. That, it, I, I don't like it. Good evening. Um, I'm the Loving Leanne with AEG and VTV. And so thank you for having me. Carrie, I love you. I feel like I need you need to pass a collection plate because you For did real. the thing. But I want to address this question to Willie Moore Jr. So recently I was telling a story about my divorce, which happened 20 years ago, and it shook me. I thought I was done, and I started crying while I was telling it. So you being relatively fresh, how are you coping? Are you ready to have these conversations that are so deep? Nobody got married to get a divorce, so... Yeah. Um, I would say the truth is I am definitely holding on to my accountability partners. You know, the one thing that I understand is that the biggest room in the world is the room for improvement. And so my biggest thing now is just making sure that I connect with people who challenge me in every area of my life. I realized that because of my adoption, because, of, because I grew up with older parents, I just got an old school way of life. Like there's certain things and borders that I have and boundaries that I have that a lot of young people just don't necessarily have. So I'm exploring that so I'm not so strict on what I believe that I want. Uh, I will say this. I've I never dealt with depression. I had never dealt with anxiety. I never know what, never knew what it felt like to have a suicidal thought. But what the Lord has now done with this ministry, it's now taking the mask off. And I'm so thankful now that when I go out and speak to men, I don't speak from a place of I'm so high and mighty. Right. We get a chance to see each other eye to eye. Um, I will say this, I had a beautiful experience in marriage. I will be married again. I'm a terrible boyfriend. I'm gonna definitely be a great husband, but I'm a terrible boy. <laughs> like, I'm gonna do all the right stuff. I'm like, hey, I'm gonna do the, like, I just know women, you, you give mixed signals, but I would ask this, that you continue to pray for me as I continue to go through this journey we have small children i'm all about legacy and family so that's so right now that is where my main focus is i ain't necessarily thinking about willie and relationships i'm more thinking to make sure that their legacy life um is, is amazing so that's where i am right now thank you for asking thank you. i love you too Next. thank you so much yeah but why is he 
fine, whatever. That's his experience. It's okay. I'll leave it at be. But he's saying that he's very flexible these days. You don't have to be flexible. Just be biblical. That's what we're looking for. Okay? Leave the flexible at home. How about just being uh, biblical out here? Okay? <laughs> mm. Yeah. All right, next. Uh, good evening. My name is Antonio. Um, I enjoyed everything about this whole panel. I'm an avid follower of Dear Future Wifey. One yeah, day. I, you envy me a yes, couple of times. See? So I love it when I see brothers that the podcast is resonating with. So talk yes. to me, brother. I brought my Dear Future journal with me that I write to my wife, too. Good. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, my question is, I believe in being hot, humble, open, and transparent. So I'm a 25-year-old virgin saving myself for my wife. I <laughs> So, yeah, I just, no, no. I've seen a lot, you know, in family or through people, you know, God told me that I was going to break generational curses and start generational blessings with, with doing this the right way and doing it God's way. So do you guys have any advice for that? Like anything, any tips or anything that you see may come up? You've seen, you, you, you seen the guy? You got him. You, 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 you need to give me some advice, brother, because right. you said. Man, God, you got it already. We, okay. You know, we fall short of the glory. Right, right. 15. Yeah, 15. Yeah. Well, I'm short of the glory of the Lord. Right. Pray for me. And I feel like yes. what you just said yes. to me was so beautiful. Yes. And as a woman who's looking for a husband, knowing that you had that type of discipline, yes. that type of honor for your body, that type of respect for where you're going, you need to be up here teaching right. us what, what's going on, yeah. to be honest. Uh, Antonio McMillan. Antonio McMillan, um, I just want to tell you, man, um, that God is going to honor your discipline. Yeah. And so, so even though you have this journal, like what I see for you is like creativity. As you begin to move in your creativity, I want you to live not only with that journal, but God is going to begin to deal with you in dreams, visions. In the, it, like you, You've been it's having a real pain. issue with sleeping, right? So sleep has been difficult about 2.30, but I want you to pick up that pen, and I want you to begin to write. Because if God can trust you in this area, he can trust you with millions, billions, and trillions. Church, if you believe it, make some noise. For I do declare that you are the head and not the tail. That you are the lender and not the borrower. That your best days are ahead of you, man of God. I want you to walk boldly. The Spirit of the Lord says you have to be confident. I need you to scream it out. Say, I am confident. Make some noise. Let me say, I am confident. 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 That's your declaration for 2023. And when we come back here in 2024, I declare. Well, so at least, at least the stuff that uh, lady said was, you know, Jesse was just like, okay, the only intelligent thing that she said. Obviously, uh, Willie went in, you know, naming it and claiming it all over the place, okay, the things that are not in the scripture. But, you know, uh, kudos to this young man, at the very least, him being in this situation that he's waiting, he's preserved himself. That's how we are to be, biblically speaking. So hopefully there's other people there who've um, learned a lesson one or two, okay? Despite, you know, all, all the stuff that they're saying over there that you cannot even uh, find in the scripture, okay? So, <laughs> yes, they're declaring everything over there. Now, I just wish also... They could have tackled in his situation, right? Like, okay, we have to acknowledge there's people who are single and they desire to get married. It's not easy, but uh, you know, give them, uh, give people hope. You could be single, like you know, one day you might get married, one day you might not get married, right? So they naming it and claiming it uh, for him, and then if it doesn't happen. What happens to him? So they should be able to share people like if it happens, yes. If it doesn't happen, yes. Either way, you're still going to thank God. Either way, you're still going to glorify God. Because not everybody is going to get married, despite people desiring to get married. But, uh, you know, uh, good for this young man. Bless okay. You know what? It's a 
okay because I am Nat Martin. I have met uh, some of you on the panel. And you know what's so crazy right now? I met this young man on a plane. Wow. Nine months ago, I was flying to New Orleans, he was just sitting here, and I talked to everybody, and we, we talked, we met, he was going here, I was going for 24 hours, he was going here because he is an actor, and he's living his dream and his purpose, and then I said, I gotta take you to this best restaurant, because I gotta, he never had oysters, and it was like, I come here, yeah, I love him, but I come here, I met him today, and we just been connected, so to love see it. him and y'all pour into him like that, it's been yeah. amazing. I love it, love so, it, all right, love it. But, I'm gonna get to my point, so... I am Nat Martin. I am retired, um, 20 year plus combat veteran. And <laughs> thank you for your service. Thank you. Thank you. And so coming out of the military, I've been out one year retired and I went on a journey of building my own business. I'm a transformation coach and motivational speaker. Throughout the time when I served, I've always been an entrepreneur. And I met you at the man's conference. I volunteered with um, my mentor, Eric Thomas. I met Stefan. We done did a couple of events together. And one of the things that I asked from um, Dr. Eric Thomas was about being a female entrepreneur and dating. And you guys hit on a couple of the topics of the questions I wanted to ask. One of the questions was, one, the single mom. When it comes to dating, we didn't really talk about- Let me ask you this, out of the questions that you think right now, what's the, the most to, important ones you're gonna ask The one most question. important is when I'm a single mom, I'm divorced twice, I'm a leader, I'm an entrepreneur, I'm a woman. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a female. And when you package that all together and you present it, she mentioned it the most. The thing that I teach women now is that nobody thought about me. So when you date, I ask, I ask you see the same question. What's the question? How do you present yourself to know that when that person comes, my purpose partner, how do we identify that they're not a distraction? Stefan. Come on, somebody. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, you. you, you one, you gotta go to God. That's always the, the, the case, you know what I'm saying? You gotta go to God, but you gotta be honest with yourself about can they honor and respect where you're going in your life, all right? And the path you're walking. But this is hitting my spirit, so I have to say it. And this is not saying it's your situation specifically, but some of you are walking a path you chose, not God. Some of you are pursuing careers and achievements that you are striving for, but God never called that for your life. And now when that man comes in there, you want him to be convenient to the path you want to walk, not the path you should be walking. You're stepping on toes, you stepping so on toes. you gotta understand that it's not just about asking God if this is the guy and he a distraction, but are you even where you're supposed to be in the first place? And for some of you, for some of you, it may be a hard pill to swallow, but you may need to walk away from what you've been trying to build this whole time. But trust that what God's gonna build for you is gonna be a hundred times better. So I just wanna put that's that out. That's good, that's good. Wait, wait, can you, can you get to that? Because I know what my assignment is. Well, we, got, we gotta move on, because we, we're already in the negative right now. You look at that clock. No, how do you know that that's the oh, perfect Lord part? Oh, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord. We're gonna talk yeah, about it. He got, he got, he got an Instagram account. Yeah, he got There you have it, guys. There you have it. So this lady, cause uh, she's a single mom, she's she's been divorced twice, she's a leader according to herself, right? She's a leader, she's an entrepreneur, she has all these things, and then she's wondering how come she doesn't have a husband. Okay, she's wondering how come she doesn't have a husband, and now these people are always telling him, you're looking for a purpose partner. You're looking for a purpose partner. You are not looking for a purpose partner, sweetheart. Okay, you are looking to make yourself be a wife material. You need to be a wife who is ready to submit to the leadership of your husband. If their husband comes along and says that, you know what? I don't want you to be doing this business. Are you ready to, to, to let go of that business? If not, then you're not ready. Are you ready to submit to your husband's leadership? So clearly, what she's looking for is, is quote-unquote, that purpose partner who's just going to attach in to whatever else she's doing. It doesn't work like that. No wonder all these people are out here looking, looking. They're not going to find anything because that's not what men are looking for. Men are looking for a wife. They don't care that you are a leader. They don't care that you, you are an entrepreneur. They don't care that you have that business. If all those things are not in their order, if all those things, they, they are not in their priority, right? Your priority is going to be your husband. Your priority is going to be your home. If you're not ready to prioritize those things forget about it okay and where is your spiritual life where is your spiritual life why are you out here looking for these men to tell you where you should find your husband be in the scriptures read the bible pursue godliness seek to uh, be conformed to christ 
Okay? So when you're pursuing God, like, you know, you'll be surprised where the husband is just going to come along. But you're out here, everything, you've put everything, in, the ducks are in the raw, and the husband is nowhere to be found. Like, you're just not ready. So I think what Stefan was saying there was definitely direct towards her. I agree with everything that he said. Like, okay, is that what God would want to have you? You see what I'm saying? Or oh, you're too busy doing those things that you don't even have time to meet that God demand. So, yeah, all this uh, Jamal's church, y'all. Hmm. The, question. the question is, how do you walk with a man through the consequences of his actions when he's created distrust, disconnection, hurt without feeling like you're throwing it in his face? Stop walking. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's so I'm sorry. That's you got to know. That's it. She just we said, talked, we talked we're about that to earlier. Stop situations walking. that are not healthy. Like, that just sounds like Stop you're walking. trying to force something that obviously is not healthy for you. Mm -hmm. You are not his therapist. Good. Okay? God so, got him, baby. God, yeah, got, him. God got him. Take, take your walking shoes off, put your heels on, him. and go to brunch with your friends. Praise him. Stop walking. I'm asking for a lesson on grace. Let me say it like that because I know that what God has called me to. So how do you do that in my own healing? Walk with him through grace. When God has said walk through grace, but I don't want to feel like I'm throwing it in his face. Because one of the I things that he said was do what you can handle. Yeah. Okay. Do what you can handle. So no one can tell you what you can actually handle. Like you have some people who say a non-negotiable is cheating in marriage. But there's some people that say, it's, nah, it's not really that deep for me. So it's like whatever your, your non-negotiable is, to thine own self be true. So whatever that is, then be true to that. Okay. Remember the heart pumps blood to itself first. Mm. Yes. I, I don't know, to be quite honest. I'm very disappointed. Okay? Where, where, no, these women are not getting the help that they need. They're not going to find the husband they're looking for. They're just going to find the men who are just going to waste their time. Because whatever they're looking for, they're not being given truth. Truth. The truth is in the scriptures. Okay? <laughs> Seek first the kingdom of God and all these things are going to be added onto you. These things are going to be added on to you. Like, you should be willing. Like, okay, what if the husband doesn't come along? What are you going to do? What are you going to do if the husband doesn't come along? Are you content? Are you content? Do you know what that means for you just to be, this is where I'm at. I'm, 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 it is well with my soul. Where is that? All these gurus. It is well with my soul, with or without. Ash, Ben. I wish, I, I mean, I'm glad I wasn't there because I would have screamed out there like, no, sis, <laughs> bring Bible, please, bring Bible. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, I don't even know what this is about, okay? <laughs> Susie already has said it, like, no, no one, I don't take advice from, from, from people who are not married. <laughs> yes, exactly. They had, <laughs> that one, Susie, I was just, they keep saying, like, you know, your face, your face, your face. Like, no. Me, 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 me. Do you think if this, that's why they're in this situation, because all their life has been me, 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 me. That's why they're here. That's why they're wondering how come things are not working out. I've done all these things. That's not how it works. They are not being told the truth. They're thinking like, okay, you know, I'm going to take care of me, right? It's the selfishness all over the place, okay? You have to understand, like, okay, if, uh, if, if the husband you're looking for, right, are you ready? What if you're not ready? How do you know that you're ready? How is your spiritual life? How is your godliness going on? Okay. How is your prayer life? How is your, uh, how, how is your uh, Bible reading? How, how are you in church? What are you doing in your life? All these questions, they, they didn't even bother to ask them. So it's very, very unfortunate. Fine, you're gonna be here till tomorrow. <laughs> here we go. Hello, my name is Zayda. And How you doing, Zayda? I have like an identity crisis because I'm originally from West Africa. We're talking about yeah. No, 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 no. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm originally from West Africa. I moved here when I was 19 years old. And some of the problems I'm having right now is you try to date within your culture, but I've evolved, I've become a better woman. I wrote a book, I was in a domestic abuse situation, I got out, I feel very powerful, feisty, I'm Amen. bringing it. Amen. And so what's the question? I've, 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 I'm bringing it fire. <laughs> and I feel like a lot of times when you date within my culture, they're quick to tell you that, oh, now you're Americanized. Right. You, you're acting like an American woman. So, and so, then you try to cross culture. So what's the say, question? Huh? What's the question? Yeah, you cross culture and date an American man, and they say you I, you, you stop being African. So a question normally ends with a question mark. It's called why, <laughs> what, when, where, how. So, so.
So this ain't like, ask the question. Like I can kind of relate to what she's saying. What's the yeah. question? I feel, so what, you're, you feel like you're you're battling with staying true to your culture versus yes. staying true to yourself. Good. Exactly. Right. Good. And it. so I feel that, like Latera said, to thine own self be true. That's what yeah. the word says, right? I'm Haitian, and I know that a lot of my outlooks are not what the traditional, you know, Haitian family outlooks are. But I am me, and I have to honor myself, and I have to be true to myself. Yeah. And I'm just going to tell you the same. You're beautiful. You're gorgeous. Yeah. Be true to yourself. Walk yeah. your path, and the right person will come along. Just do the work that it takes to do the work on you. And when it's your time, it'll be your time. Good, Thank good. You. Thank you so much. Beautiful queen. Here we go. Questions. Okay, so you can see she's she's out here say she was from africa and everything none of those things do they don't matter and did you see what she led up to i wrote a book okay so she says i wrote a book uh almost like okay i have all these things together but i don't seem to find a man and the africans are telling me that you're americanized like yes yeah yeah i i understand that yes africans are going to tell you americanized why because you you know you don't want to be that traditional woman. You don't want to be that traditional wife. So Africans they just be like, okay, you know, they call that being Americanized. But be that as it may, because you are a Christian, your identity is in Christ. So your identity is not in the books that you have. Okay? Who cares how many books that you have? You are looking, you know, your identity is in Christ. You're praying and asking God to bring you that godly husband. Meanwhile, you're making yourself to be a godly woman. Even if that husband doesn't come, you're still going to be a godly woman because that's what you're called to be. That's what you're called to be. So this idea of like, let me do all these things. And then like, okay, I'm going to attract a man. Like it just doesn't work like that. Okay. It doesn't work like that. So... I mean, I actually feel bad for these people, okay? Because they think that whatever they're getting there is something else. It's not. Why do you think all those people on the stage are single? Okay? If it, how come they're not married themselves? Now they're going to tell you how you're going to get married, and they also want to get married, but they still don't have a ring on it. At least now uh, Dr. Kerry Turner, <laughs> she got a ring on it now. Like, you know, <laughs> she was able to score Jamal Bryant. <laughs> Oh, man, let's continue. Question. <laughs> question. I have a question. <laughs> question. Y'all got me scared now. I know, question. Okay, my name is Demetria. I'm 48 years old, and I'm don't. trying to get freshly into dating. My question is... Good. I know guys... <laughs> You say, my question is, we going in the right path. Go ahead. My question is. They say, wait for God to bring you your king. But if a woman finds a man attractive, how much flirting can you do without stepping out of your good. feminine Carrie. energy? Oh, I you want to answer that? No, I think Christian is good for this one. You, 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 you want a woman, answer the you want a woman or a man to answer? I'm sorry? You want a woman to answer or a man to she answer? She wants a guy. I think a guy. A guy should answer. I'm asking her. What do you want? No, I, I'm saying, like, you know, what amount of flirting can a woman do that doesn't come off as being masculine? Christian. Which one of y'all want to answer that? Say what you, say what you want to say to that that person don't leave you're gonna regret it I've done it in my life when I was younger and had low self-esteem I did not think that I wouldn't even I wouldn't speak to a woman that looked like you or you or you or you I, I didn't value me so I regretted that for years I was out of college before I finally got some self-esteem and realized God did something pretty cool with me I must be decent I must be all right say the things you want to say shoot your shots yeah. if they go in they go in but you don't have any regrets if you don't you know it Christian, did you check your DMs? Did you check your DMs? To shoot your shot? My, 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 I turned them off because I would get body parts. I would get body parts. That was my question. So can I, I, can I say something? A man sometimes need a, needs a clear point of entry. Okay. Once you give that clear point of entry, meaning you say what you want to say as Christian says, then you back off because if he wants to continue to be a majority masculine man, Big he up. will take it from there. Yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah, but I contact a little bit of smile. You know, that's that's fine. But you know what? I'm a man. I ain't got no business telling you how to flirt. If you want to flirt, you flirt. <laughs> you, you be the woman that you are. But don't leave things that you want to say unsaid, please, for your sake and for whoever that amazing man is. Don't do it. Say what you want to say. Yeah, it's a, it's what I always say. I say men, sh uh, women should present and not pursue, and a woman, a man should pursue and not Ooh, persuade. So present. In the olden days, I call it the the handkerchief. They would drop a hanky on the on the floor, and the man, oh, let me help you, and they grab it and give it to you. <laughs> There's an open door of opportunity. So Dude, drop the proverbial handkerchief. <laughs> drop the proverbial handkerchief, and, and, and it will open up the door. But I just like I always say, the easiest way for a woman to get my attention is just a comment under. I read all my comments, so they leave a comment under my IG and say, hey, I saw your last podcast. Blah blah blah. Blah, blah. I'm a sapiosexual. So if she says something that's intriguing, I'm gonna go to her Instagram, I'm gonna look at her picture, see if her picture's in alignment with what I desire. And if it's something I desire, I'm gonna slide in her DMs and I'm gonna be like, hey, how you doing? I saw this post that you made about XYZ. I didn't gave y'all my playbook. He and knows I, <laughs> Thank you. He is telling you. 
What is the question? Like, drop your handkerchief. Drop your handkerchief. Okay. Yes, God. Oh, boy. What did we just listen to, guys? So these people are giving... I, I, I don't know, guys. Okay. So now this woman is asking, right? Okay, you know, what amount of... Uh, why are you flooding with a man to begin with? Huh? You don't have to flood with a man. You are a godly woman. There's no need for you to be flooding with a man. <laughs> There's no need for you to be flirting with the man, okay? If you're in an environment, okay, like you go to church, you go to church every day. There's men over there. They see you. You see them. You are in groups together. Like conversation, things are going to happen organically. But if you're out there wanting to flirting yourself, that's just a turn off, especially for godly men. You can do that in the world, okay? A godly man, if, when he sees a woman who's flirting, that is just like a... a, a if they'll just be like, no, if you can flirt with me, which means you can flirt with another guy, you can flirt with another guy, they are not interested. Okay? So as a godly woman, you need to hand yourself godly in all situations, in all circumstances. But they're out here in church giving them worldly advice. Now to Christian, this man doesn't take any responsibility, okay? And then this woman, did you see? It was just like, oh, did you check your DMs? You are, you know, he's 47, she's 49. You're sliding uh, in his DM. Like, do you honestly think the 47-year-old is going to date a 49-year-old? A guy of his caliber I was just like, come on, guys. What are we doing out here? Huh? What are we doing out there? And then the host did you hear what the host says? Like, okay, oh, when people slide in in, in my DMs, whatever, I'm going to go to their DMs. I'm going to look at their pictures on Instagram. All right. So how come you're still single? How come you're not married? Not only that, when you go to those Instagram, right? How many people put post their pictures where they're not looking so great? Okay. They're all doled up. They have their makeup. Everybody's looking beautiful and everything. Okay. So the things that they're pursuing, this, this is like vanity. Nothing wrong. Somebody being cute and everything. But what happens when that woman stops, uh, when she gets some wrinkles? When she stops looking the way she used to look on Instagram? Okay, so go deep, like, you know, th character. Okay, you're looking for a woman who, who has virtue, a woman who has good values. Okay, don't settle on these superficial things. But, I mean, this, this is what you get at Jamal Brands, Chicho. Okay, left and right. Be content. Just be a godly woman. A godly husband is going to come along, Okay. If Adam was able to find a woman when there was nobody in this world. Now we have 8 billion people in the world. Surely a husband is going to find you. Don't despair. Uh, well. Oh. Hi, how are you? My name is Julie Alvarez and I'm 21 years old. Um, I began my self-work when I was 16 years old and as a young woman I have so much to learn. I know y'all, but oftentimes I struggle with seeing my value and trusting myself. Um, I know this will be one of the biggest lions I will have to slay in my lifetime. So my question is, what is some wisdom the women on this panel could, could impart to me for this season in my life? What did you say you struggle with? Um, seeing my value and trusting myself. What do you see when you look in the mirror? <laughs> Because I can tell you what I see. Okay. I see a gorgeous girl. I see a smart girl. I see a girl with a great destiny. I see a girl who sees things that maybe other people don't see. But I see someone who also is hiding. You have like, it looks like you like to hide behind stuff. Stop hiding. Girl, walk your walk, talk your talk, girl. You got a lot to add to this universe. You got a lot to give to the people that are around you. We're not gonna, the world is not gonna enhance if you don't give us what you have. And whatever God has given it, given to you, he's given it to you for you to give and for you to expand others. Stop hiding. You're gorgeous. You have a great destiny. You're intelligent, you're smart. Okay, you fine. I would Girl, say, I would say, no, go ahead, Yo, Terry. Get out. We, we're uh, I would say really I pour into you. yourself every day. <laughs> Spend like maybe 10 to 15 minutes just saying I'm wonderful, I'm beautiful, yeah. oh my God, I love my hair. Look at yourself because you got to pour it into yourself. Again, the heart pumps blood to yep. itself first. That's exactly yeah. why okay? I asked her, I said, well, do you look in the mirror? Yeah, girl, you, but you got to say it to yourself yeah. daily and put it on your calendar because it's women, we don't put ourselves on our calendar. Yeah. Put you on your calendar, yeah. okay? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Yes, this is what you're going to get over here. It's about you, 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 you. Look yourself in the mirror. Tell yourself you're beautiful. Tell you. What is that going to do? People need to be transformed from the inside out. 
what is it that's like what are you looking for okay god made you that way he created you that way so if you're not happy with who you are which means you're not happy with what god made you so you are in disagreement with god which is a very dangerous place to be what's making you feel that way instagram you see what i'm saying facebook those are what what is instagram what is facebook Okay, those are just things that are eating up in your flesh. But if you have your identity in Christ, then it does not matter. Okay, it does not matter because that's where you find your value from. Your value is not how you, uh, how you look. Okay, that's not, I mean, ah, I'm dying out here, yo. <laughs> ah. Lord, help these people. Here we go. And we're going to try to make y'all answers really fast. We're negative 10 right now. Go ahead. Okay, so I'm the last one. I'm going to make it quick. No, we're going to stop at the one in the green. Okay, okay. Well, she's the last one. Okay, but I'm still going to make it quick. So, hi, my name is Tiana, and I wrote a book called The Relationship Playbook based off of unconditional love she and said, long lasting relationships. She said, y'all going to let me promote Here's my, my book question. now. Here's my question. Here's my question. She said. So, my, God told me to write a book for the children. The, not children, but the younger generation, because they're as lost as we once were. So, what's... I forgot my question. So what is um, a way we can teach the younger generation about unconditional love so they aren't lost like we once were? Who wanna grab I'm a that question? Who want to grab that question real quick? Dr. Oh, Stacey? No. Uh, Justin? I didn't get teachings about that when I was younger. Oh. <laughs> I wish I did. You know, I really wish I did. I feel like, you know, your parents are your first, like, unconditional love teachers. You know, but then sometimes parents can kind of be conditional. You know what I mean? So I don't know where to go other than the word, other than God's word for that. I don't know, I just, I'm a broken record. Pour into yourself. You gotta pour. You you know what I love me is, rather than I hate me. So tell yourself I love me more. You know what I'm saying? You you and it has it starts with you. I just can't stress that enough. It starts with you, and you know what words pour into you and what words subtract from you. Use more words that pour into you. Yeah. Good, good, good. Okay, explicit instruction. You all said what you want in a, in a person. You all are very successful. Do you find that your station in life limits your outlook on dating and also limits your dating pool? Absolutely. Yes. 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 this to like some of my home girls I've said listen have an open mind but having an open mind doesn't mean to lower your standards right and I feel like a lot of girls women struggle with that especially a lot of my friends they are in the entertainment space so men just they see us and already they picture someone masculine just because they see us calling the shots and it's like no take time to actually talk to me you'd be surprised you'd be surprised but yeah it does and you think it wouldn't especially with social media but no it does it really does here's the thing for me even if it, it does and it can be difficult at time the last time I checked it was what over eight billion people in the world yeah. listen if god is all sufficient he all sufficient in all things yeah. so he can drop whoever you need they can find you in any place and so it's really about perspective if you believe that whatever is for you is going to find you or locate you then that's what you believe either you have faith for it or you don't people say that the dating pool is full of whatever i don't care what it's full of god send me what i need to have there it is yeah. but, that's also, good. but also oh. too the dating pool sometimes is small because you're in a small pool. So I feel like for a lot of black women, especially like just now we're starting to hear, oh, date white. There's so many other people other than white men. Yeah. There's Spanish, there's Indian, there's so many. So open up your horizons. Don't lower your standards, but open up your horizons. You'd be surprised Good. what you'll find. Good. I can say Good. if you're walking around in a scarcity mindset, then you attract another yes. energy of a man that has a scarcity right. mindset. Good. So walk around in the abundance of what you can attract rather than what social media is telling you is available to you. Good. Yeah, these are Christian relationship goals gurus okay I, once again why are you guys still single all this information that you that you're giving not only that uh jesse can say like yeah men when they see me i'm doing this whatever i'm calling shots but talk to me well if a guy has already seen you that you're calling shots why would he be wasting his time to talk to you because you're just gonna try to do the same thing <laughs> calling shots in the marriage <laughs> Oh, man, I, I I don't know. Okay, it's better. It's good to be old school. Exactly. We need this scripture, okay? Yes. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. Exactly. Yeah? Thank you, Susie, for sharing that scripture. Not only that, you know, like they keep saying, your heart, your heart, your heart, your heart, right? The heart is desperately wicked. Who can know it? So why are you busy pouring into your heart the heart that is, that, that is wicked? Next question. 
Hi, hi, my name is Manera. Thank you for this evening. Um, this question, I believe, would be for you, Mr. Whitf Whitfield, or um, Pastor Dr. Carey. Um, you all, you mentioned in your podcast about different couples who have um, gotten together and then separated because that wasn't their purpose partner, or people who have had trouble and then maintained that. So is, do you believe that there's really truly one purpose partner, or is that a, a process where you can be coupled with someone that God used, but then you know you find like your real purpose partner? So is there really one, or is there, could there be multiple? I always get asked that question a lot. A lot of people always tell me that maybe since I've gone to this different level of healing, I need to go reconnect with my ex-wife. And I've never shared what really broke our relationship, and, and so I still won't. But the reality, I just always say I cheated, but it, that wasn't the reason. But, um, but I did cheat. So, but, but, but. <laughs> But I'm the one that filed for divorce, so go figure. So, so the reality was that it's um, a lot. This is a lot of layers. It's a lot. It's a, it's a layers. So, so in it, when you say the the one person, people always say is there that one true love. I believe that. I don't believe that. I used to believe that there was one. When I was young, I used to be there's just that one person. And if you never meet that person, Stefan and I, we talked about that one day on the episode. If you never meet that person, then you throw off the, the balance of love because if you if if my person marries somebody else, then I'm I'm stuck. I ain't gonna never have nobody for the rest of my life. You know, and God ain't that that whack. You know what I'm saying? He ain't gonna be like you just married the wrong person. So. These people ain't gonna never meet nobody. So it's just not like that. I do believe that God gives us a spiritual wherewithal and the maturity to decide that which we desire. And you know, and then when we desire that and we put God over it, then God will bless it. And when the Bible says that who God joined together, let no man put asunder. And so in our own self, I was the person that put my marriage asunder because I wasn't mature as the man that I was supposed to be. I didn't even understand what a husband was. I finally began to research what the word husband meant after nine years of marriage. I said, what does husband mean? So I went and Googled it and found the etymology of husband meant householder, one who holds his house together. Wow. Well, I didn't even know that. And here I am with a, with a title, but not even operating in the job description. Wow. Wow. So, so the reality is like getting a job at, at a place and then they're holding you accountable to the job description, but you like, I don't even know what I'm supposed to do. Yeah. So that's what I was doing. And that's why I said I took this journey, this healing work extremely serious because I don't want to do the same thing over again. So that's what that is. Do you want to jump on that? Nope. That was good. Thank I'm you so much. <clears throat> well, you, men, you are, a, you are a relationship guru, right? You're coaching people and you profess to be a Christian. So you are going to Google to find out what a husband means, whatever it is. Fine, that's what you did. But it, the scripture is where you find what a husband should be. The responsibility of a husband are in the Bible long before Google was even created. So if Google didn't exist, then what happened to you? What happened to the people who lived uh, uh, before the internet? How did they operate in their household? Okay, like what are we doing over here? Okay, read Genesis. Okay, all these things are already in the scripture. So to me, if you don't know what a husband is, you got married, you're out here, you're a relationship guru. No wonder you're promoting uh, things that are ungodly. Things that are ungodly, that just sounds so good as a soundbite, but it is not. They also, they did not answer the question the woman asked, right? So that woman asked, like, okay, is there one and everything? So this is the idea. Like, you pray for God to bring you a husband. Is one wife, one husband for life, okay? You are only free to marry in Christ. If your husband dies, you, you wish to marry, you can marry only in Christ, right? God is going to bring that person to you. So you don't have to wonder like, oh, is this the one? Is this the one? No. You look at the scriptures, okay? What are the qualifications of a godly man? That's what you go for. What are the qualifications of a, of a godly woman? That's what, you, that's what you're going for. And you settle in that and God is going to bless you. You get married, you are in a covenant. That's a marriage for life. So he's out here willing it. Oh, I'm the one who divorced my wife, but I don't want go to uh, go back to her. I'm the one who divorced. Like, what, what are we doing here? And Jamal has his people in his church. It's very unfortunate. Very unfortunate, but, you know, these are Christians, okay? They're bringing a reproach to what marriage is. They're bringing a reproach to the name of God. So what are we supposed to be doing now with uh, Pearl Davis out here? Huh? These people are just embarrassing us left and right. Oh, my goodness. I wish they didn't identify themselves as believers, quite honest. Then at least it will be better. Oh, this is what secular people think, right? But now what are we going to do? Huh? They didn't bring no scripture. Or, if everybody knows Proverbs 31. They didn't even say that, not even a hint. Genesis, this is where marriage comes from. Huh? They didn't even, nothing at all, nothing. It's just the heart. Point to yourself. Oh, you're beautiful. Oh, you're this. Huh? You preached that day. Oh, boy, I'm telling you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> nah, I'm going to look at the definition. I ain't never know the definition for this. <laughs> the whole definition. Go ahead. Ross on Erica Greer. And my question is, 
For men like me who was never taught this kind of information growing up, are there workshops that we can attend to learn these principles get them right? That's good. That's good. That, that is really good. I would say in the, in the place of or until you find that, um, there's no shame in it. Now it's not a profane word anymore. Look into some therapy. Yeah. I, I've literally, over the course of my years, because I needed to heal from the foster care to the child abuse to the neglect to everything, and then and, and sit in that, heal from it, stop blaming me, stop blaming them. Therapy worked wonders. Um, it's okay to talk to somebody. Find you somebody. Find you a nice, amazing black therapist if you can find one. Yeah. Employ one of them. Support black businesses. But um, yeah, see, we got, we got some. Yeah. But um, I, I would look into that space because it'll you can talk through some of those things you can you can sit in some of those things you can feel why they broke you and understand that you can't heal from some stuff unless you understand why you broke yeah. underneath that particular weight or that specific thing looking at some therapy brother it's it's a wonderful thing it's liberating i, I would that's my recommendation can Let I me add ask you something to that too? I'm gonna ask him his name. What, yeah. what was your name again oh ross on greer listen i want to congratulate you as a man for even desiring that amen because that's been the thing that i've been saying for the longest that these women these women are going out they're going to conferences they're getting therapy they join in courses and and all these programs to become better but we don't have the same for men like even when you asked that question i was like where could he go i mean where, where, where can he go i was actually thinking like where is that but i look at stefan i was like do you even have that you know what i'm saying it's like it's like well i, I was gonna know. say too you're here at new birth new birth has a lot of programs here for that so you're in the where my new birth people at there are yeah. a lot of programs for that here but then i was gonna add to that a lot of my friends who are therapists they say something they say this one thing about black men they say that a lot of times when they have black couples come in that the black man waited until it was just basically like too late there it is therapy is not just when things are broken it yes. is proactive yes. do you guys understand that yes. you shouldn't just wait until everything is falling